السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Berman was still sleeping, but he is where he is. I want to start off by saying all praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most powerful. It's only him we worship and only him we bow down to and only him we turn to when we're in need. Also I'd like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters, for those of you that have come here, I hope that every single one of you have come here for Sheikh Adnan Mink. Not for me. You've come to seek the real knowledge from the people of knowledge. For those that sacrifice their time, their blood, uh, away from their family, away from their loved ones. Those that have gone out of their way to seek the knowledge. I'm not a talib al-ilm, I'm not an imam, I'm not an ustad. If you take me as a role model, if you look up to me, the doors over there keep it moving. I'm none of these people. I'm not saying this to be humble, brother, I'm a dusty guy. I'm a waste man. It is where it is. I'm a man that displeased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It led me to where I am today. Walhamdulillah, it took my mistakes to get me to where I am today. I am a man that displeased my parents. I am a man that displeased my community. I am a man that displeased and let down my imam in my local masjid. All because I took desires into my own hands. You see, the tabi'een, they said, one of them said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels with intellect. Walhamdulillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the haywan, the animals with desires. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the insan with both the intellect and the desires. So for those of you that take the desires that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then best believe you're going to be as low as the animals. The desires of smoking and committing zina, the desires of making haram money, the desires of falling into riba, the desires of displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the desires of going against the Quran and the sunnah, those desires will make you as low as the animal. But there is certain desires that we can take ourselves that are beneficial. The desire of sleeping. It makes your body function when you get your desire met. When you go to sleep, your body functions. You think well. You eat well. The desire of eating. You have to eat in order for you to survive. There are certain desires that you have to do. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't go against the Quran and the Sunnah. Akhi brothers, wallahi, for the sake of Allah, yeah? Try and be mature enough to, and if you feel like there's certain brothers that you can't be mature around right now to be here with, just move space and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've been in masajids where I've gone and I've seen brothers, wallah al I'm not talking about from this community, but I've seen brothers while a speaker is speaking, not myself, you could do as you please with me, bro. I'm a nobody. You could disrespect each other, start talking, that don't mean nothing to me. But when people are speaking that have come out of their way, there's brothers that are nudging each other. There's brothers, wallahi, yesterday, was it yesterday? Staffla. Yeah, yesterday, I went to a masjid, the brothers were tiggling each other. <laughs> like, like disrespectful towards our sheikh that was with me. Staffla, not yesterday, the day before. The day before, not yesterday, the day before. I was with the sheikh and they did, I'm like, what is this man, disrespectful, when the sheikh is talking, you're over talking and you're having discussions, like, can't you wait to leave the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show that respect to the sheikh that's come, you could not show respect to me, you have every right not to show respect to me, that's perfectly fine, but the reality is there's etiquettes of the masjid that every single one of us should take, and there's manners, a brother, your good character, and like what I was saying, in this sort of thing, the intellect, if you use it, that is according to the Quran and the Sunnah, including your desires that's going to lead you to Jannah, inshallah wa ta'ala, is going to make you go as high as the Malaika, if not even higher than them. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted you with. You see, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will move forward with or without you. I've met people that have memorized Surah Fatiha before even taking their shahada. Look at the seriousness of this. How many of us take the Quran serious, bro? How many of us take the Sunnah serious? I've seen some brothers that told me, Wallahi, they are embarrassed to using a branch. A branch that other people will look at you and laugh at you. Do you know what branch they're talking about? The Muswak. If the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done it, who gives you the right to feel embarrassed, bro? Embarrassed in our communities. To have non-believers, look at this, look at this man, man. Man climbed a tree like a monkey and decided to take a branch and wash his teeth with it. So what? We've become embarrassed to using the sunnah. 
Our sisters have become embarrassed in wearing the hijab. Look at what's happening in France and other countries in Europe. They are not allowing the Muslims to wear the hijab. And sisters in this country are the sad. And I'm not here to go on to you. Rabb al-Kaaba, I'm not. The sisters are the backbone to this ummah. We're not here to let them down. We're not here to put them down. But the reality is, bro, how is it that us men are pointing fingers at the sisters? Or look at this one or look at that one for not establishing the hijab. What about the hijab of the brothers, bro? Where's your character? Where's your behavior? Your etiquette and your manners, that's your hijab. Your aura is your hijab. Brothers want to go to the gym and have the tightest clothes they go on. And they, mashallah, tabarakallah, but what's next? You're going to wear a bra. Now fix up, bro. Man, I am showing every definition in your body. And reality is, bro, this is not from a Muslim. What's going on, Ak? The Muslims are suffering. And it takes every single one of us to be the next leader. Why are you putting yourself down, Ak? You could be better, in a better position than me and every single imam that's living right now. It's you. You are the future, you're the youth, and I understand we come to Masajid, and some of them, they don't open up their doors to us. They're like, oh, they come to the masjid and they interrupt the musallis. They come to the masjid and start resting. They come to the musallis and start play, playing football with a tennis ball. So what? It's better for them to be in the masjid than be on the road. Brother, come to me. Brother, he goes to me. I come to the masjid. Wallahi, I come to the masjid straight after salah. The imams and people in the masjid, they like to be, get up and pray your sunnah. I've seen it between, okay, I've seen it with my own two eyes. Uncles, fathers are getting up and twisting the ear of the young son, telling them to get up. Okay, you did that to my son, I'm going to knock the hell out of you. I don't care if I'm, a, if I'm in the masjid. How dare you? How dare you, bro? Push this agenda of this deen. Upon the youngsters that this is what you have to do. To get up and pray the sunnah. What Islam is this, bro? Because this is not Islam that I'm trying to follow, akhi. But we're losing ourselves. Do you know why we're losing ourselves? Because the elders have lost Islam. Not lost the deen. They've lost the etiquettes and the, and the manners that Islam that brings to you. And the character. And do you know what's the best way to revive that? Start with ourselves. Start with ourselves as youngsters, bro. Let the uncles look down at you and say, Alhamdulillah, this man or this man has made me fall back in love with the deen of Allah. Establish salah at home, bro. Put your games aside. Put all of this texting and being on the phone to girls aside, bro. The deen comes first. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the difference between us and the non-believers is what? Louder, bro, louder is what? So why are we neglecting Salah? Why are we delaying Salah for the games and faith for Call of Duty? Man, they are playing Fortnite. Man can't even build his character in real life. He wants to build something on the game. What a waste, man. Facts, bro. This is what's happening with our youth. We're losing ourselves, Akhi. We're losing ourselves to the likes of the desires of this dunya. And I say this proudly, I hate when people are screaming out, free this and free that. What about freeing yourselves from the shackles of this dunya? What about freeing yourselves, Akhi? We're losing ourselves, we're losing our identity. Our purpose in life is La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Wallah al Azim. Even though a brother gifted me with one of these, like, Something to wear to represent. I love my brothers and sisters in Palestine, but me wearing a flag or me, it doesn't do me justice, bro. Like the like our brother Umar just mentioned. Do you feel something for them? Wallahi, I don't. My heart's dead. My heart's dead, bro. I'm seeing the pictures and the videos of our brothers and sisters in pieces. It doesn't move me anymore. I'm not in a position to do something. I'm crying on a daily basis for them and my mother. But alhamdulillah, why, why should I cry for them? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored them with the highest status. 
to become a shaheed. What about us, Akhi? Allah has not tested them, bro. Allah has honored that nation. Allah has honored that land. Allah is testing every single Muslim out there. Other than them, ask yourself, bro, are you really looking to make a difference? Don't be a kazab, don't be a liar, bro. Speak to yourself. I can speak to myself. I go back to my room, you might think I'm a madman. I speak to myself, what should I do to change the, like, like the condition of the ummah? Forget about the sins, bro. We all fall into sins in private. And you don't know what I'm talking about. For every single person that has a smartphone, what are you not doing? The Muslims have been addicted to pornography or music. I'm looking at half-naked girls on TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat. This is the reality. Let's not beat around the bush, bro. Speak how it is. And you wonder to yourself why the Ummah is not in a position of being victorious. Victory ain't going to come to the Muslims, bro. The non-believers used to come at us and they used to attack us left, right and centre. Do you know what the non-believers are doing now? They've taken a huge step back. They've let the Muslims kill each other. They let the Muslims' jealousy towards one another increase. And you wonder why the Muslims are suffering. Because we're suffering, Akhi. You're suffering within yourself. See, I'm mentally disturbed, Akhi. I'm physically disturbed. I'm financially disturbed. In every aspect you can think of, Akhi, I'm struggling. And I'm not struggling because I'm telling you I'm struggling with money. No, bro, I'm struggling mentally. Verbally, I'm struggling. The reality is, Akhi, we want good for one another, but wallahi, you are a kadab. You're lying to yourselves. I've seen a brother here today, coming here, man scanning their brother up and down. What, bro, what is your barcode? Man scanning you up and down, depending on what you're wearing, is depending on my confidence in giving you salam. So before I go any further, I expect every single one of you right now to salam each other right now. Behind you, in front of you, beside you. Do it, bro. You're Muslims. Salam each other. Why are you not being half-hearted for? You are Muslims. Islam didn't come for no culture, bro. Islam came for you. Islam came to honor you. Islam came to give you an identity. Your dignity is Islam. You should fight for that. My man, I'm fighting for gang banners. How many men do I know from here? How many men do I know from, uh, from Birmingham that are killing each other for the sake of the postcode wars? How many men? I know a brother that used to be one of the biggest drug dealers in Birmingham. He went to prison. He came out. While he was in prison, he was one of the biggest drug dealers. While he was in prison, none of the men used to send him money. None of the men used to write him letters. How many of the men used to go and knock on his mother's door and say, Oh, auntie, do you need anything? He came out of jail and gave it all up. He came out of jail being on tag. Some of his real friends, those that are upon the Quran and the Sunnah, came to visit him. But the reality is, bro, me and Abu Tabia, we went to his house. We sat with him because he couldn't come out, he's on tag. We sat with him, bro, and he was telling me, Wallahi, that life is misery. You're miserable. You're chasing the money, and you're chasing the girls, and you're driving fast cars. Cuss me, bro. You see that drift? What's out here? That doesn't get you nowhere, bro. That don't get you nowhere. You'll be drifting to Jahannam next. Yeah, do that. Because this is the reality. The brothers and sisters, even the sisters, are in the same car as those brothers that are high on weed, or they're high on balloons, or they're drifting away. What are you gaining from it, bro? What are you gaining from it? Actually, I know men that are doing it. They're miserable. I know men that are asking Allah, my heart is dead. My heart is dead, ya Allah. Help me. Guide me back to the deen of Allah. But your heart is so full of sin. So full of sin, Akhi. That only if you truly mean it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you back. You make wudu, you make wudu, you stand on the, on the prayer mat to pray. Your heart doesn't move. Your heart is dead. And I blame companionship. 
And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, you all know who that is, right? The one that shaitan feared. Shaitan gave up on him. He said, I can't change this guy's deen, bro. This guy is stush, hard, like, my man's on job. No, it's no catch me outside, bro. Umar ibn Khattab puts the shaitan back in his place. The shaitan is shook of him. But what did Umar ibn Khattab say? He said, other than Islam, the biggest blessing we got was companionship. Ask yourself this, bro. And dear sister, is the sisters around you right now? Is she the one that's pulling you closer to Jannah? Is the brothers around you right now that you came here with? Are they pulling you to Jannah? Are they reminding you need to pray your five daily prayers? Are they the ones to tell you to come to the masjid? Let us learn something, bro. Let us learn something. Let this heart start moving again. Because the heart is dead. It ain't going nowhere. You know why? Because you've been married to something. You're married to the dunya. The dunya will bring you nothing but misery. Brothers will come to me. Akhi, hey, help me, bro. I'm trying to complete half of my deen. Shut your mouth, bro. Man doesn't even know his own half of the deen. Man wants to complete his half of the deen. Man can't even be a role model to his wife. Or a leader to his wife. But yeah, he wants a leader. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Akhi, why you want to get married? I want to travel the world. What, do you want to, uh, do you want to, a mat with that so you can travel like a genie, bro? Hovering along the world. And he said, Akhi, your purpose is different. If you want to get married, bro, and all, and all, with all due respect to the uncles, to the fathers, I'm going to make it clear. If you have any atom of racism within you, then Akhi, best believe you're going to be in the same position as Fir'aun and the Shaitan. People will come to you and say, I want to seek your, you know, your daughter's hand in marriage because his culture or background or colour of his tone. Uncles or fathers are closing their doors on them. Let me make it clear. Racism started from shaitan. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told those that are in the heavens, please prostrate to Adam. Prostrate to Adam. Every single one of them prostrated except shaitan. How can you, Ya Rabb, how can you Created me from fire to prostrate for someone to someone that's created from clay. How? How? That's where racism starts. So shout out to the uncles and the fathers that you will not want to close your doors on anybody that's, even though they come from the same country as you, but because they're from a different tribe, Masha, you close your doors. Let me make it clear to you and every single one of you. If I hurt your feelings, I couldn't give a damn. Let it hurt. Let the soul dig into your... Well, if, uh, our brother's not, uh, the brother's not respecting the uncles. Who cares? You gave me this position of being here. I'm going to speak the truth even if it's against me. I'm not a good father, bro. To my kids. I'm not a good husband. Sometimes I forget about them. Why? Because I forget what it means to be a father and a husband according to the Quran and the Sunnah. We all fall into this. We're not perfect, bro. But you've got to strive to be better than you were yesterday. Now ask yourself this, and I ask every single one of you now. What do you, what, what do you expect from Islam? So I'm going to ask you. So I'm going to put your hand. What do you expect from Islam? Yes, Akhi. Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Who else? What do you expect from Islam? Anyone else? Allah's huh? Guidance. Yes, Allah. Mubarak. Anyone? Allah's face. Allah's face. Allah's face. Allahu Akbar. Yes, Akhi. Ease, yeah? Yes, Akhi. Peace. Peace. Allahu Akbar. You see, every single one of you. Yes, Akhi. You know what? A little man. Yes, Akhi. Yes, of course you. What do you want to say? Forgiveness, reward. Allahu Akbar. You see, every single one of you that have answered this, even though you didn't speak, but you answered it with your heart. You will know what you want. You will know what you want from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is there. And everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted you with is free. Why is it that every single thing that leads you to Jahannam, it costs you money? Man that will work 9 to 5, will get the halal money and waste it on haram, vapes, weed, alcohol. And I already did mention this and I remember when I judged these brothers and sisters. In Birmingham, I was coming back from a wedding in Manchester. On the way back, I wanted to go into a, a place where I needed to go and change my bag. My bag was leaking. The brother with me goes to me, Akhi, the only thing that's open right now is a shisha bar. I said, brother, 
I'm going in. I have to go in. It is right now, you have no idea what this means. I need to go in. Man got the headscarf and got myself buried up, put my hand in my pocket. I walked in. I see brothers and sisters. I Wallah al I saw brothers and sisters kissing, blowing, blowing at these chimneys on the go. All of these things blowing out and I see, but wallahi, Allah is my witness. A part of me became so arrogant and prideful. I said, look at these waste men. Look at these, look at them. That's someone's daughter. That's someone's son. Look at what he's doing. That's someone's sister. And I started judging them. Wallahi, the very next day, I was giving a talk in, in a masjid. Some of, some of those brothers that I saw in the shisha bar came to my talk. It made me realize, astaghfirullah al azim Astaghfirullah. Look at how quick I was to judge. And this is what it's come down to. Where we judge our brothers and sisters, bro. So quickly. Make excuses for them. It is, bro, it's from a Muslim. It is from a Muslim. That another Muslim is safe from your time and your hands. That you don't speak ill of them. That you don't attack them. Brothers and sisters, nowadays, brother, one brother makes a mistake. Waste man, Aki Ayman makes a mistake. Oh, let's do a video refuting him. Let's do a video putting him down. Let's put a video saying that he's not alam. Wallahi, you are right. But none of you look had the audacity like a man to come to me and put me in my place according to the Quran and the Sunnah. And don't ever tell me you did so because my DMs were free, bro. And you man have my numbers and you look could have come and advised me. I'm willing, I'm willing to be advised. I'm willing to be told and put in my place. You see, every single time I get a voice note from Abu Taymiyyah, Wallahi, I look at my phone, I'm like, ah, oh, man. What's he going to advise me on now? Abu Taymiyyah reaches out, Salaamu Alaikum, Ayman, I've been thinking about you. I hope you're well. Da, 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 da. He puts me in my place. He goes, Ayman, also, you said something that I saw the video of. Ayman, rectify it, and this is how you rectify it. That's a true man. That's a true companion. That's a man that wants good for me. Not a man that made a video. Ah, mashallah, tabarakallah. Let me do a video to bring content and views, yeah? To put Aki Ayman in his place. This is a man that contacted me and said, Ayman, this is where your mistakes were. Rectify it. I understand what you meant. But towards the public, this is how it looks, so do it. I said, Jazakallah khairan, ya Sheikh. Ya Habib, barakallahu feek. And every single person has become jumping on this battle wagon. The bandwagon of putting other Muslim brothers and sisters down. And let me make it clear. The only person that... Brother, it, made, it makes my blood boil. That I see online as a day youth. I hate it. With passion. And some of the youngsters don't know. And I remember I saw a video of a brother, a sister recording him while he's sitting in the front of the car. As his own sister recorded him while sitting behind him and saying, why, cannot, why can I not go online and show my body figure or show my skin? The brother's trying to put her in her place according to the Quran and the Sunnah. And once this video went online, you see a lot of these jahil sisters in the comment section. How dare he tell you what it is? How dare you to tell you how you should dress or, how, or what you should wear and so on and so forth? How dare he? The brother done it according to the Quran and the Sunnah and he was attacked. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates this man's status in this dunya wal akhir. Ameen. Say Ameen. Ameen. And Wallah al -Azim, this should be amongst every single one of us when we see our, brother, our sisters going down that route of wearing tight clothes or showing their figure. Let me make it clear to every single one of you, sister. For those of you that shows her figure you would not come close to 500 years of Jannah. Bear that in mind. Bear that in mind, inshallah. And guess what? Every single one of us is going to be accounted for what we do. And every single one of us is going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naked, alone. You're not going to look around to tell the next brother, oh, look at that sister, no bro. You're going to stand in front of Allah. And there is an angel that was created for one purpose. That angel has his mouth on the trumpet and he's looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order to blow the trumpet for Yawm Qiyamah to start. 
That's his job. From the moment of creation till now, that angel still has his mouth on the trumpet waiting. I'm going to ask you this, brothers, man. You see, the nation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is honored, is gifted. And because of uh, 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 and every single nation that came beforehand, look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored this nation. That it is us that's going to go to Jannah before everyone else. Look at that. This is the honor from being from the nation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Sheikh mentioned, bro, we're going to have snakes around us, bro. We're going to have people that's going to betray us. We're going to have people that's going to backbite us and put us in our place. And wallah al to such a level to backstab us. We're going to have this. Yusuf alayhi salam, his own brothers plotted against him. His own brothers threw him in the well. I thought he was dead. Then even in that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him mercy. That he was picked up by a caravan and sold as a slave. And look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in that moment, and look at the fitna that we ourselves fall into nowadays. What's the fitna that we fall into nowadays as men? As some shout out. What's the, whim, what's the fitna that we fall into nowadays as men? Huh? Louder, bro. Say it proudly, bro. Women! Unless you swing the other way, the door's over there. Keep it moving. The fitna of women, I think. And everyone falls into this. Married men, single men, everyone falls into this. Akhi. Do not lie to yourselves. Akhi. We all fall into this. The fitna of women. Look at what happened to Yusuf السلام, when he was locked in the, in the room where the woman tried to seduce him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to his aid. Even in that moment, Akhi, what would we do, bro? I was backing off my top, Akhi. We fall into this bowl. When you are going astray from the Quran and the Sunnah, my brother, you won't have control over yourself. Your desires will take over you. You're backing off your top and everything you're wearing. Yusuf alayhi salam could have fell into this trap, but he came with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid. And what did he do? How did he, how did he act in that moment? He tried to run, run towards the door. And even in that moment where they, they, they themselves tried to plot and lie against him and put him in jail, he was patient. Sabrun Jameel. Sabrun Jameel. What does Sabrun Jameel even mean, bro? What does a beautiful patient even mean? Man then would think to yourself, you know what? I leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to sit on my ass and I'm going to wait for something to happen. That's it. That's not Sabrun Jameel, ya akhi. Sabrun is you still take those baby steps to better yourself, to go towards what you want in this dunya wal akhirah. Sabr is understanding that everything befalls on you and that is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabr is knowing that you will come to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those that he loves. This is sabr. My brother will come to me, my brother will come to me, my brother, I'm going through financial issues. My brother, my wife just left me. Sisters in my DM, my boyfriend just broke up with me. Wallahi. What do you expect me to do, bro? Am I a man? Am I, first and foremost, am I your therapist? Am I your counselor? I'm not here to give you advice, but let me tell you something that I believe every single one of you should adapt to your lives. And wallahi, wallahi, when I knew the true meaning of this ayah, Akhi, it opened up doors for me. And I learned it from my mother. And it's in Surah Yusuf. إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ That I only complain of my grief and my worries to Allah. You see, I've been there, bro. I'm going through marriage issues. I turn to a friend. That friend ends up snaking me and decides to use it against me. I'm going through financial issues. I turn to a friend. That friend uses it against me and makes jokes around it, including from some of the mandem. I go through a mental health issue. What does that friend do? That friend decides to go and tell other friends in order for them to laugh at me. My only companion in this world is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And I realized that because of this ayah, that you only complain of your grief and your worries to Allah. So whatever you're going through, bro, if it's your home, if it's your mother, if it's your father, if it's your work, if it's your university, if it's your school, Akhi, adapt this ayah to your life. Innama ashku bathi wa huzni Allah. You only complain to Allah. We are humans. We fall into mistakes of where we snake our brothers and sisters in Islam. Some of us, not physically. But some of us, we snake them with a backbite in and speak ill about them. Some of them, we even decided to go as far as Wallahi. Wallahi. Going as far as even if a brother is in a, in a situation where he's going to marry a sister, that same brother, because of hasad, because of evil eye, that he doesn't want good for his brother, he decides to contact the sister and even make lies about him. Oh, sister, he does this or he does that. He's talking to this girl, he's talking to that girl. In order for you not to get married. And I've seen it happen. And this is a man that is far from the Quran and the Sunnah. This is a man that don't want good for you. This is a shaitan in the form of a human being. I've seen it happen, bro. I used to make haram money. Haram money didn't get me nowhere. We had the fame that came with it. Displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by hurting other people came with it. The fame came with it. The girls came with it. The money came with it. And wallah al azim every single one of us was still miserable. Some brother asked me, what was one thing that you regretted back in Jahiliyyah? The one thing that I regretted in Jahiliyyah is neglecting and delaying Salah. What happened to Shaitan? He was told to make one prostration to Adam. And because of that prostration that he never did, he refused. Allah put him in Jahannam for eternity. I'm going to ask you now, and I'm going to ask myself this as well. How many frustrations have we delayed or neglected? How many salahs that if our parents tell us, yeah, amen, it's time to pray. No worries, mom. I'm about to get up and pray. The, or we, wallahi, we don't even do it. We don't even do it. The moment we hear footsteps coming up the stairs, Allahu Akbar. Straight away you go into sajda. Straight away. You're more fearful of your parents than you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is this the reality of a Muslim? And you expect victory, O Muslims. You expect victory. There isn't even victory inside your own households. So don't ever speak of victory in your communities and the victory of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because the promise of Allah is real. That Allah would never let this Ummah down. It is us that's letting them down. It is us that are doing the filthiness behind closed doors. It is us that are neglecting the Qur'an and the Sunnah on our five daily prayers. It is us that are neglecting the zakah. And I remember when I was doing construction, we did a house next door. Akhi, next door. There was a Muslim brother that came to us and said, I see you doing some work, so can you come to my house after work? And I want you to give me a figure, a quote, on what you could do with my house. I said, say no more, we come. We come to the house straight after work. We tell him, what is it that you want? He wants an extension, he wants a loft conversion, he wants his kitchen done, he wants the whole of downstairs refurbed, he wants spotlights. So Allah Mubarak, how much are you looking to earn? Uh, how much are you looking to spend on this? The most I have is 140k. Okay, what's next? He said, when can you sign papers in order for me to even give you the money and for you to come back and carry out the work? Even if it means it's future, like in the future, in a few months, or half a year, or even a year. But I would like to get an agreement between us right now. The brother that's with me told the uncle, why are you so eager? Like, why, why are you trying to give us the money and come to an agreement right now when I told you there's a few projects we got lined up? So you're in the pipeline, so you're, you're going to have to wait your, like, wait your turn. The brother turned around and said to us, I didn't know if I should headbutt him, break his jaw or, or something. The brother says to us, I am not trying to pay zakah on this 140k. 
He's trying to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's got 140k, bro. 140k. Ya alam, ya nas. 140k. And you don't want to pay 2.5% of your wealth on that. The moment we heard that, the brother and I looked at each other and said, Brother, Jazakallah khairan, we'll get back to you. We never got back to you, Makhi. We're not trying to get involved in things like this. How many of us are involved in mortgages in there? Birmingham, London, Manchester, Bradford, Cardiff, Glasgow. Everyone is involved in river nowadays. In interest. Everyone. Man, I can't. Bro, bro, man. Bro, it's a necessity, bro. I gotta buy my house. You're all involved in interest, riba. It's gonna come time, bro. Don't worry, Akhi. Don't worry. I remember when my sheikh was telling me this, Akhi, I was getting gassed. But he said to me, bro, in your maqiyama, an angel is gonna come to you. He's gonna give you a sword. And I'm there getting gassed, thinking, yeah, man's riding out. It's time to put in work. On the disbelievers that disbelieved in Allah. Do you know what my sheikh told me after that? He said the angels will give you a sword and he will tell you, go and fight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said, what? He said, go and fight Allah. Go and fight Allah. So what do you mean, bro? He said to me, for those that get involved in riba, in interest, yawm al you're going to fight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us are involved in river, bro? We're tired, Akhi. Wallahi, we're tired. Be mindful that the promise of Allah is near. And be mindful to always remember the destroyer of pleasure. Who's the destroyer of pleasure? Huh? Death. Death, death my brothers, death. My sisters is death. I know of stories. Of brothers and sisters, both Muslims, Muslims. They, one of them has passed away in the middle of committing zina. You backed off your clothes. You followed your desires. You returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while in the state of zina. you got to remember how you return back to Allah. You gotta remember that every single action that you do is according to the Quran and the Sunnah. I'm a Muslim, bro. I don't call myself nothing. I'm just a Muslim. I follow the Quran, I follow the Sunnah to my best of my abilities. I follow that according to the understanding of the companions with Tabi'een. Don't come at me with nothing else, bro. I'm a layman. I'm striving. I'm learning. And it takes every single one of you to do the same thing. And something that I hate, and I'm going to ask every single one of you, right now, right here. How many of you still have your mothers and your fathers? Put your hand up. How many of you still have your parents? Allahu Akbar. Let me read you something, inshaAllah wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever loves that his risk to be more, listen to this carefully, yeah? And his life to be longer, he would keep the ties of kinship. He would keep the ties of kinship with your parents, bro. How many of us get married and we forgot about our parents? We put our wives before our parents, we put our husbands before our parents, and this is what it's come down to. Wallahi, I get DMs from sisters. Can I get married without my father's permission? Really, sister? What are you saying? These words should be alien to you. But you want to go. Why? You're going to go to your local drug dealer. You're going to get married. He's going to get you pregnant. You're going to have kids. And then what's he going to do? He's going to do the same thing he done with you to another sister. He wasted your time and got you pregnant. Now he's going to go and do the same thing with someone else's sister. And you're coming in my DMs or... Abu Taymiyyah's DM, whoever alim and whoever talib al-ilm that's out there, you're sliding in their DMs and says, I need help. Sister, the English have a beautiful saying. You made your bed, go and lay in it. You put yourself in that situation. But there is hope for you. That no matter how much you transgressed against yourself or sister, 
you can still turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times have I heard of sisters coming to me or coming to the Talib al ilm or even my Imam and they say to me, it is time for me to learn the book of Allah. It is time for me to pray my five daily prayers. But because of my haram relationship and the pictures and videos that I have done with my ex, he's now blackmailing me. What do you mean he's blackmailing me, sister? He's telling me that if I now start practicing the deen of Allah and break up with him, he's going to expose these videos to the public. He's going to expose these pictures that I have with him, with one another, and committing zina, or doing every other filthy act under the sun while being recorded. This is what's going to happen, oh my dear, respected, beautiful, and beloved, and honoured sister. This is what's going to happen to you. If you waste your time with these scumbags, because men are scums. Men are waste men. Except for the man that obeys Allah and worships Allah and he is fearful of Allah. If he respects you, oh sister, by coming to your door and asking your parents for your hand, now that's a real man. man. That's a real rajal. Anyone else is a scum. Do you know what I mean by scum? Do you know, te- you know, do you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? They're, they're in the gutter. The men are below them. That's what you are. For displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and going against his laws. And it's going to come back to bite you, old brother. It's going to come back to bite you because you've done it to someone's sister or someone's daughter. It's going to happen to you, don't worry. And it goes in. And listen to this. Whoever breaks, and let me make this clear, and this is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever breaks the ties of kinship will not enter Jannah. You will not enter Jannah if you break the ties of kinship. That like, don't you go home and appreciate your parents? Don't you do that? Don't you go and kiss their forehead or kiss their hand and show them gratitude? I miss doing that. I wish my phone ran one more time and I see my mum's number come up. I wish. How many of us we are on the block or why committed haram? We see the phone calls of our parents, mom and dad come through, and we ignore it. And we throw the phone away. How many of us? Your parents care for you. There was a mother in the south of UK, and I'm not going to disclose the area, yeah? In the south of UK, there was a mother. She messaged one of her sons. Wallah, and it was about 5.45. She messaged one of her sons, when are you coming home? Because we're gonna dinner's gonna be ready soon. Allah is my witness. A few hours later, the mother returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The boy is wondering, I wish I replied to my mom. I wish I told her that I'm gonna be home soon. Now he's gonna come back home to a mother that's no longer there. And you're gonna be in that position, bro, because death is coming for every single one of us. I go home now, Akhi. The first thing I used to hear when I come home, who is it? My mother determines who it is that's coming through the door. I go home now, I don't even hear my mother's words. And brothers want to cut ties with their parents. Overman them. You want to cut ties over parents because of girls and the boys. Boyfriends and girlfriends. You want to cut ties with the man, uh, sorry, with with your parents because the man, them are too busy in the block. Smoking weed and having girls around them. And let me make it clear to every single one of you, bro. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated and made it clear that every single person in this ummah will be forgiven. Who is he talking about? Who is he talking about in this ummah? Us, us, bro, us. Those of you that are here. Every single one of you in the ummah will be forgiven. Except for the one that publicly and openly sins. How many men do we know that are filming themselves listening to music? Filming themselves vaping? Listen to, uh, filming themselves committing zina? Filming themselves even pushing it out there that they're with the next man? How many women do we see this? How many women do we see doing this? Why the man them are doing what? Snapping them. Well, you think Allah don't see you, bro? 
You think Allah don't see you, sister? No face, no case. <laughs> really? You think Allah don't see you? You think Allah don't know who you are? Brothers, fix up, man. Come back to the deen of Allah. You want, you want to know who your Lord is? Then follow and implement the Quran in your lives. Do you know who your Prophet is? Then follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Look at Salah al-Din al-Ayyub. Salah al-Din al-Ayyub. He himself in his teenage years, he himself wasn't the best of practicing people. But when he was guided back to the deen of Allah, he opened the doors of Jerusalem. You could be next. Have that faith within your heart that you're going to be someone that's going to lead the ummah through your actions and your etiquette and your manners. You, O oh Muslim brothers and sisters, are the backbone of this ummah. You, O oh Muslim brothers and sisters, is who the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cried out for and said, "My ummah, my ummah. You and I. Let's make a difference, inshallah. Let's start with ourselves. Let's start implementing the five daily prayers." Let's start being respectful to our parents. Let's start being respectful to coming back to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's get ourselves involved in madrasa and doing Islamic studies or doing Quran studies. Let's get back and doing that inshallah. Wallahi you will see a difference in your lives the moment you start taking the deen as a priority. But it starts with you. Oh lions of Allah. And do you know what? when we roar, what do we roar? We roar la ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. That's our role as lions. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Jazakallah khairan for your time. Isha is around the corner, so I expect every single one of you to go, make wudu, come back, pray Isha, and this is how it is going to be, inshallah. And for the sisters, just one last message. Keep away from men that are wasting your time. Wallah al azim Go and seek knowledge. Go and find who you, who you are. Find out who you are, O oh sister, and become that person. Knowing who your identity is. Because wallah al and I'm going to say this because this is my opinion, the reason why the ummah is still striving is because of our sisters, because they are the backbone of this ummah. Every single time we ask people when we need help to send containers back to Syria, back to Palestine, it is only the sisters that come forward and want to help. The men are too busy in the shisha bars. But it is the sisters that even though they are single mothers, they come forward and say, yeah, amen, just give us a curtain so we can be comfortable taking off our hijab and we will deal with these toys. We will deal with these clothes. We will deal with these containers of tuna and so on and so forth. We will deal with them for as long as let us be. So the sisters, you have a big responsibility in this, in this deen and in this day and age. Forget these scummy men. And go towards the Qur'an and the Sunnah to your best of your abilities. And if a man really cares for you, or sister, and loves you for the sake of Allah, and wants you as their wife, he will approach your men in your family, your father, your brothers, and so on and so forth. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.